Chapter 13 Why the bright flame ones? Why? You said you fought so hard for your boy. You said you loved him. It would have been easier for you to give him up and find another host to start over again. Hell, Mr. Lewis, you fought off an army of priests to keep him. Most of whom thought you were the devil himself, not just a demon, but the head honcho. You managed to physically incapacitate and intimidate the original priest who tried to exercise you to the point he simply gave up. Why did you fight so hard for this? I asked. <laughs> they think I'm Satan himself, eh? <laughs> he laughed. That is funny. See, because if Satan himself possessed anyone, they would be burnt to ash for his finger even touch them. Us soul eaters are tailor-made for the job because we can move in and out without as much damage as one of the real and big guys. That's why we like the bright ones. <laughs> they have staying power. They already hold a brighter flame, so that hellfire that burns in us don't burn them up quite as fast. Jeremiah's aging face crossed my mind. Burn up? <laughs> yeah, their bodies wear out. People meant to hold both good and evil, light and dark. The conflict between the two is why they aren't immortal. You judges are the only other spiritual being that holds both, but you were grown from the seeds of both. They were made from dust, and poorly, if you ask me. Their breakable little bodies can't hold concentrated evil or concentrated good for long periods, except for the special ones with the bright flames. They last longer. They're the exact opposite of disposable. And if you want to get some real long-term plans, you got to find one of them. That's why me and my boy was going to do something real special together. And that's why I know even after all these years that he is still alive. If he would have gone early, it would have been in a blaze of glory because that's how these souls are. They don't go out quietly. He belched loudly and lit another cigarette. The other one was now stuck in the remains of his mashed potatoes. Just one more question, Mr. Lewis, and then I'll let you get home to your dogs, I said. What did you consider to be admissible as documentation of this mutual love affair with your boy? Did you ever really get the boy to perform a blood covenant? Or were you just totally full of shit? Because I think you were. A guy like you doesn't misplace paperwork when it comes to a prize like he was. The one I knew whose flames burned like you described wouldn't have given herself over to anyone's control willingly. The only way you could have done it was through trickery if you did it at all. I did it. I did. That boy wanted me every time I entered him. His little cock would stand right up in detention like a little toy soldier. He wanted me. He let me write my name over the place where his heart was. And so he knew he was my property. That's a good enough blood covenant for anyone written on his whole skin. He was spitting mad now, drool coming down his chin. I had touched a sore spot. You fuckers in your goddamn paperwork. Every I dotted and T crossed in proper pronunciation. Fuck you, crow. Fuck you and your dead bitch friend. I don't have to take this shit from you. I'm doing you a goddamn favor. Fuck you, crow. He flipped his lit cigarette across the table at me. Now, Mr. Lewis, I'm just trying to do my job. You think I like sitting across a table from a pedophile, hillbilly, arachnid piece of shit?
Like you? Fuck no. You smell like you've been eating shit sandwiches and pissing yourself. I fucking hate sitting here. I'm not trying to cause trouble. I just want to get this done and leave, I said. He crossed his arms and glared at me. Fine. The only paperwork was on boy's skin. Why you care so much anyways, crow? If she's dead, then there ain't nothing you can do about it now, he said. Was she up to you like my boy was to me? I loved her. I said, I don't think it was the same, though. I loved my boy. Don't you ever question that. You think a demon can't love, but I did. You can't help but love those ones. You either love them or you hate them. But there's no ignoring them. Yeah, I said. And I know what it feels like to have them reject you. He smiled and rubbed his eyes with the heel of his hand. You got any more fucking questions for me, Crow? Because I'm getting tired of your bullshit. Yeah. What would you have done if he hadn't let you carve your name over his heart? If he had rejected you then instead of with Michael's intervention? If you got something as special as he was, you can't give it up for someone else to pick up later if he had tried to fight before and was going to reject my advances he would have to become disposable it would have pained me beyond anything to see my boy take his last breath but there's no way i would have walked away from him his life would have been mine one way or the other i threw some money on the table enough to cover the bill and leave a decent tip Thanks, Mr. Lewis. I'll be sure to tell your superiors about your cooperation. Maybe you'll get your benefits reinstated, I said. Yeah, well, thanks for dinner, fuckhead, he said. You can come back if you need any more advice. Maybe keep me on retainer. I hope to hell I won't have to see your ugly face for another 30 years, Mr. Lewis. No offense. I said, none taken, Crow. You have good night, he said. I left him sitting at the booth, smoking another cigarette, under the no smoking sign, everyone in the restaurant completely oblivious. Jenna was sitting at the far end of the counter, rolling silverware in paper napkins. It was a Monday night, and the place was dead. Hey, I said to her, Jenna, right? Yeah she said, looking at me suspiciously. You were sitting with Lou over in the corner back there, right? You need more coffee? Sorry, I haven't been over. My dogs are really barking. She looked down at her swollen ankles. No, we're fine. I just wanted to tell you that you have a beautiful soul and that your baby is going to be something special, I said. She turned red and looked down. I got a boyfriend, mister, she said. No, no, I don't mean it like that. Um, I know sometimes you can see things or you know things before they're going to happen. Uh, what I'm going to say sounds really weird, I know. But listen to me. Here is some money. I took out a roll of hundreds from my coat pocket and slid it to her across the counter under my cupped hand. Take this and put it in your pocket. Don't tell anyone where you got it. Go behind the counter and get me a to-go cup with black coffee. Her eyes were wide as saucers when she saw the money. I looked back across the restaurant. Mr. Lou was talking with Nadine, but he kept glancing in my direction. I looked back at Jenna and then towards the coffee machine. She got up and made a show of filling the cup while I kept talking. I could see the bright sparks of her daughter's light inside her. She was already showing the vibrant soul colors Mr. Lewis was talking about, even in her unborn state. You're going to have an amazing little girl. She's going to be just like you. She's going to be able to see things that no one else sees. But you are not safe here in this town. 
tonight. Tell the manager you need to leave work early because you think you're going into labor. Get in the car and drive to Kansas City. Don't stop for gas until you are past the county line. Call your boyfriend on the way and have him meet you there. Do you have family here? I asked. She nodded her head yes. Good. You know all those bad feelings you have about Lou over there? They're right. And you should get the fuck out of here as fast as you can. Get a place in KC. Use the money to get by. And if you ever need anything, you can call me at this number and I will get you a job, clothes, whatever you need, and do not come back. He has an eye on your daughter. I slipped her one of the cards. Are you some kind of an angel? She asked. Something like that. But you better get out of here quickly, I said. I turned and left the diner. I waited in my car until I saw her leave. Mr. Lewis came out right behind her, but not in enough time to catch her before she was in her car and out of the parking lot. He saw me sitting in the car, sipping coffee, and walked straight up to me, slamming his fist into the window of the Corsica, breaking it. I spilled hot coffee all over myself and the seat. This is why I never buy new cars or wear white. In my line of work, it isn't a good investment. In the dark, he was starting to morph into his true form. Fat body, human head with its unnaturally wide, grinning mouth, complete with row upon row of teeth in various states of decay. Spindly spined legs came out from all around his body like a giant daddy long legs standing in the middle of the truck stop's parking lot. I wondered if his glamour extended to the diners and staff inside the building. It probably did. She was mine, you piece of shit! He yelled through the broken glass of my windshield. Mine! I started the car and threw it into reverse, backing away from him as fast as I could. I figured if I rammed him hard enough with the car, I might keep him down long enough to give Jenna a running start. Once she crossed the county line, he couldn't touch her. You better run, you little spineless fuck, he yelled as he started toward the car on his long legs. That sweet little baby girl was the thing I've been waiting for ever since I landed in this shithole. The only thing that made this place bearable, my ticket out of here and you had to fuck it up, didn't you, Crow? Well, I have heard you folks can't die but I can make you hurt. Ever hear the expression about eating crow? He started charging the car. I shifted into drive and put my foot to the floor. The car broke off two of his legs at the knees before I hit the driver's side of his truck. His severed legs were spraying a viscous green liquid everywhere. I could see it steaming in puddles upon the cold ground. I tried shifting the car into reverse, but the car was not going anywhere. I managed to get the door open and rolled out of my seat. My head had been hit pretty hard on the steering wheel, but I started walking back towards Mr. Lewis, who was still spewing green goo from his missing limbs. The diners inside were still oblivious to what was happening outside the windows where they sat. I had forgotten how flammable certain demon blood can be when it's fresh until both my car and his truck went up in a fireball behind me. You scrawny little motherfucker, he yelled. He could walk, but was obviously off balance from the loss of a couple legs. I was still walking towards him, though I wasn't sure why. By all logic, Jenna was past the county line already and therefore out of his reach. I could run now and be done with it. He couldn't catch me without his truck and with his broken legs, but I was pissed. Come and get me, asshole. I have had one hell of a month dealing with shit from fucking everyone around me and I am more than willing to take it out on your disgusting ass. And you know what? No one will fucking care if I do. You think your side gives a 
shit about you out here in the middle of nowhere? They don't. I bet they've even forgotten you exist, you putrid piece of shit. I was itching for a fight. For someone who was supposed to remain neutral, I was about to explode. You're nothing. What kind of weak piece of crap goes after an unborn baby? You blew up my fucking truck. I'll kill you, you fucking pussy. He lunged towards me, catching me behind my knee with one of the spines on his leg. I went down hard. I was on my own in this fight. There was no wrath to help me. Usually I just stand there and stuff disintegrates around me. Not this time. I thought about that as Mr. Lewis's teeth loomed in front of my blurred vision. I wasn't going to die, but that didn't mean this wasn't going to hurt like hell. You want to eat crow, Mr. Lewis? Then eat crow! I split myself apart into my flock just before his mouth clamped shut on my neck. I flew into his eyes, pecking and clawing at him. His spiny legs did nothing to help against my onslaught. He couldn't touch me, or so I thought, until he managed to catch one of my birds and wrap it in his spider silk. I'll eat you bit by bit, individually wrapped portions I can suck on later, judge he yelled, catching another one of my birds. I could feel the poison spreading through the flock now, slowing down my attacks. I gathered my flock back together again and came together as one on his back. I was bleeding from a missing ear and two fingers on my right hand, but I was whole. I grabbed him around his fat neck and twisted until I heard a popping, crackling sound. His body jerked twice and then fell to the ground. I hadn't killed him but it would take time for him to regenerate the nerve damage I had caused. I pulled his body back behind the diner portion of the truck stop and hid it under some trash from the dumpsters. And then I went back to the front of the diner and rescued my missing digits and ear. The truck and the car were still smoking, but most of the fire had gone now. The diners inside hadn't noticed a thing, but I knew they would when they came out. The demon blood had either burned up or evaporated, but the cars weren't going anywhere. I found my notebook in the middle of the parking lot. It was singed, but I could still read my notes. I stuffed it back into my coat pocket and started walking towards the highway. The fingers and ear were unusable given the amount of poison they had been injected with. It would be easier just to regrow them. I tucked both of them under my arm to dispose of as at a safer location. I had a hundred miles to walk to get home. I was in no shape to fly, and no one was going to pick up a hitchhiker who was dripping blood from the side of his face and the place where two of his fingers used to be. I hoped Jenna had taken my advice and made it to Kansas City. I picked up my phone and made a call. Five minutes later, Gabe appeared in a brand new white Tesla and picked me up. Try not to bleed on the upholstery. I just had it detailed, he said. I brought you some coffee for the ride. I knew you would have preferred whiskey, but open container is not legal in Missouri. Thanks, Gabe, I said. What happened to you? He asked. I did a surprise inspection on Mr. Lewis, I answered. It didn't go well.